Roxo Media House. Hey Frog fans, welcome inside the Flying Tea Club studio here at Roxo Media House. I'm Sebastian Gorzin. And I'm Pedro Vives with the TCU Men's Tennis Team. Thank you for always supporting our tennis program, and we look forward to seeing you at our home court soon. We're also excited to host this edition of Frogs Today. In today's show, our football team is on a bye week, ahead of a big showdown against Texas Tech next Thursday. Our basketball team gets high praise from a college hoop insider, and our soccer team is preparing for a postseason play. Plus, we'll meet the new men's golf coach. Our triathlon team will soon be competing for a national championship, and we'll preview tonight's Rick Ross concert in the Schollmeyer. Today's show starts after a quick word from one of our sponsors. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. In Botham, we put people first. So we simply start by listening to you. Whether you're searching for customized insurance, HR, or financial solutions to protect your home, car, health, business, or employees, our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Higginbotham, insurance, HR, and financial services, inspired by you. Welcome back inside the Flying Tea Club studio. I'm your host, Sebastian Gorzny. Our football team is off this week. Their bye week comes after a tough loss to Kansas State. During his State of the Frogs coaches show, head coach Sonny Dykes said the bye week will give his team the opportunity to regroup. I think for us right now, probably not a bad time to have a bye week. I mean, I, I do think that there's some things we need to get addressed and we're going to have some extra opportunities to do it. Um, and so this will give us a chance to, to really, you know, go be, have some physical practices, which we need to uh, do a lot of, um, you know, a lot of banging. You know, that's the one thing we, we have to do. We haven't played as physical uh, this year as we need to. And, you know, I think we're going to have a chance to really emphasize that over the break and and. You know, you always walk that fine line between too much banging and getting guys healthy and, and rested up. And but we're gonna we're gonna walk the line. But we're gonna be aggressive and we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna bang and we're gonna do what we have to do to to get the best out of these players. We got to do some things to to get better and improve. Um, you know, it's the open date comes at a good time. I think we have an opportunity now to really focus on some things that we need to get addressed and and get better and try to to, to finish the season the right way. We've got four four games left uh, against quality opponents and. None of them are going to be easy, but, but we need to go play and go play our best and, and prepare, and our guys will do that. I mean, that's the great thing I love about this team is they're going to show up, they're going to work, uh, they're going to get better, and they're going to go play on, on Thursday night and, and try to win a football game. So we got to do a better job of, like I said, getting them ready to go and having a better uh, game plan than we had uh, Saturday. Quarterback Josh Hoover called the loss to Kansas State embarrassing, and his teammates are ready to turn things around. You know, everybody's obviously really disappointed after the game, just – Felt like we let everybody down. Felt like we let ourselves down. Embarrassed. I mean, uh, it was an embarrassing loss. I mean, there's no other way to put it. So uh, we were we were kind of down on ourselves, and then we kind of picked ourselves up Sunday and said, you know, we can sit here and feel sorry for ourselves, or we can get back to work and do what we do and know what um, continue to do the things we're doing and uh, make some improvements. And um, you know, this team we don't have any quit in us, and I don't have any quit in me, and other coaches don't either. So uh, we're gonna you know lick our chops and just keep moving forward. Yeah, I learned a lot. You know, honestly, it's a big learning opportunity for me, just the, the road atmosphere and uh, what it takes to go out and win on the road. You know, it's not the same as a home game. It's not the same as coming out here and having the fans on your side. And so um, you have to bring the energy and bring the um, – you have to execute from the start and come out starting fast. And uh, that's a big deal on the road It's just having that momentum and because um, you're always going against the fan base and what they're cheering for. I take that responsibility to get guys going and – uh, just make the guys around me better. And then uh, personally, you know, I just uh, turnovers, you know, can't turn the ball over. And, um, you know, BYU had one or two. And then obviously this past week we had one. And so uh, that's something moving forward. Just want to take care of the ball and uh, make better decisions. And then um, just make plays on third down. You know, you got to stay on the field. And so uh, I feel like there was a couple of third downs last week that could have been a little bit better. And um, so that's what I'm going to focus on moving forward. This may be a bye week, but you can't tell the way the guys are getting after it at practice. Uh, I know the coaches, you know, aren't really treating this like a bye week. You know, we're going to still attack practices and stuff and just get better. People are kind of down a little bit after a loss, but I feel like people are just ready to attack these last four games. But we're kind of just taking it one game at a time, you know, because at the end of the day, we just got to focus on Texas Tech first and then focus on the next game after that. Next Thursday, the football team travels to Lubbock to play Texas Tech. The guys know everything is on the line. You know, we're kind of both in that same spot, so I feel like we really just have to push these last few games just to get bowl eligible and stuff. So I feel like that's kind of just the mindset. 
these next four games are going to be big for us. So, um, you know, we talked about it on Sunday. I mean, why not do everything you can to see what can happen these next four games? You know, we got an opportunity to go out and uh, play Texas Tech, who's a good team. And, um, you know, every week's an opportunity to, uh, to show what we can do on offense. And I think we've shown what we have. We've shown glimpses of what we can do, but it's time to put it together these next four games and it starts to Tech and it starts to practice tomorrow. The game against Tech will be a homecoming of sorts for Coach Dykes, who played baseball for the Red Raiders while his dad coached the Texas Tech football team. You said you're going back home. Anybody special coming to the game that you care well, about? Well, I got my brother and sister both live there, and mm -hmm. so they'll, they'll be around. Um, yeah, and I'm sure I'll have lots of friends and, and stuff that'll, that'll be there. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, most of them, I would imagine, will be wearing Texas Tech stuff. So right, right. Uh, we'll be friends before the game and mm -hmm. after the game, but, but not during the game. My dad was the football coach at Texas Tech. I really wanted to go to school there. Kind of, um, you know, had a chance to play baseball there and kind of, I got to do what I wanted to do from that perspective. Um, had a great experience, played for Larry Hayes. Larry's a heck of a coach, Hall of Fame coach, and and uh, really learned a lot from him and and had fun. I mean, we had a, we had a good we had some good teams, and it was first a fun base, experience. correct? First base, yeah, which basically means you can't run, uh, you, you you can't throw, and you can't field. <laughs> and so I, I was a one tool player at best, and uh, could swing it a little bit, but that was about as good as much as as good as it got. Please make sure you check out the Frogs Today pregame show next Thursday, November second at five p.m. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Welcome back inside the Flying Tea Club studio. I'm Pedro Vives. The TCU soccer team earned the number three seed and a first run by in the Big 12 tournament. They finished in third place with 20 points after losing to Texas to end the regular season. The Frogs will play the University of Central Florida in the quarterfinals on Monday. UCF is new to the Big 12 and finished sixth in conference play. They're one of the three teams the Frogs didn't play during regular season. That's interesting. You go into a conference tournament and typically every year before this, uh, we've played everyone that we, it's the second time around. And this will be a, a, a different type of uh, animal where we haven't played them and, you know, we're not as familiar with them as they, as normally we would be. And so it's an inter inter interesting uh, situation to be in, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, their quality, um, and they wouldn't be in the tournament if they weren't. And you know, I have a lot of respect for their 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 staff and what they've been able to do over the course of time. And so I know that uh, they're going to come in and look in the past as well. And uh, it should be a, a really good soccer game to watch uh, from a from an aesthetically pleasing point of view. And so hopefully uh, we'll be a little bit better than them and are able to advance on. You know, familiarity is always a bonus. Um, and so not having that familiarity with them is going to be a challenge for us and well, hopefully it's a challenge for them as well. Um, but we're going to do our due diligence and prepare as best we can and, and give it our best um, go at it come Monday night. The Big 12 soccer tournament will be held in Round Rock, just north of Austin. And congrats to our triathlon team. In just their first season as a varsity sport, they've qualified for the national championships. Team member Sarah Jimena was in the studio to talk about team success. It has been amazing, I have to say. I mean, it's not still finished. We still have a national to come up. But so far, I'm really happy. The team is amazing. We're working out hard, really hard. And I don't know, I think um, we thought we could do it good. But like like looking at how the other races have been like going out and everything, I think um, we can do even better than we thought. So... I mean, I think there's just one answer to that. It's hard work um, and a huge and amazing team that works for us behind us because it's not only us putting the work in, going every day to practice. It's also coaches like supporting us every day and being there for us. We have Annie, nutrition. Cody is helping out with like whatever little mm, ache we have. <laughs> He's there. So yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> The work we put in here is really important, but I think each girl, we have come from backgrounds from like other schools we came from. And I think um, what made us triathletes now, it's also a lot of work we did the years before. So that's a big part. And and I don't know, I, I, I just think that the TCU team support us so much that, yeah, I think most of the, I mean, I would say half of the credit is ours, putting the hours in there and supporting each other as a team, but also the TCU team is a big help too. 
of course, I think our goal will be win nationals sometime. Um, I believe we could make it this year. It's going to be hard. They're just a lot, a lot of un like other very hard and strong teams. But, but I think that will be the strongest goal we can get. And I think we will get there. We will. Congrats, Sarah. The USA Triathlon National Championships are in Phoenix on November 11th. Turn into golf now. And our men's team is led by new coach Bill Alcorn. Alcorn was an assistant at OU after his collegiate career at Baylor. But don't worry, he now bleeds purple. Played golf at Baylor from 04 to 09 and, and then played for a while after, after Baylor and then got into coaching in 17 and went up to Norman. When I was in school, TC was a different conference. We never saw him. I mean, so yeah, I mean, but purples, yeah, great color. Looks good on me. I don't really think I have any green and gold in my closet anymore. Folks at TCU are fantastic. TCU is, uh, you know, in such a great location for, for golf. I mean, we got unbelievable courses all around Fort Worth and, and uh, really, really lucky to have great relationships with all of our private clubs. And then, and then the public courses as well are just super nice to let us come out and, and uh, use their facilities. So, you know, the footprint here with, with Fort Worth and TCU itself is, is set up to just kind of create a monster here with the golf program. So I'm really excited about uh, getting started with that journey. When you get around 12 new guys, uh, you don't really know what you have. And so, um, trying to figure out each other pretty quickly on, you know, those first couple of weeks, you know, you jump right into qualifying. Uh, we, we play our first tournament basically two and a half weeks into the, into the school year. Uh, we actually did really well. We had a chance to win. Uh, we got beat by Vanderbilt, who's a great team. Um, and then we kind of, we kind of struggled a little bit in the middle part of the fall and, and, uh, um, didn't finish off as strong as we wanted to. But in my opinion, I kind of like that because we, I uh, got kicked around a little bit, but it, it really exposed what we need to work on and move forward through this off-season time, um, getting ready for spring. So I love where we're headed. I really, really do. You know, that's kind of our focus right now is is getting them to understand how to practice and what to practice on and, and how, do, how do we create those tournament feels back at home and in, in, in practice situations. So, you know, the next month or so, we're going to be hitting the weight room really, really hard. Uh, Woody, our strength coach, is fantastic. And so we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of work in there. Um, but, you know, our guys, I think, are going to be pretty active in, in tournaments through November, December, and January um, on their own. They can go out and, and play tournaments. And so um, I think that's where we lack a little bit more from other squads is just tournament experience. So uh, I'm excited for them to kind of get that opportunity to go off by themselves, play some events, and come back ready for the spring. In the spring semester, our men's golf team will begin tournament play the last week of January. We'll be right back after this quick break. You know, we wouldn't be able to do the things we were able to do this year without the Flying Tee Club. So we got to continue to, to get people involved. It's it's more important right now than it's ever been. Flying Tee is special. It's 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 the best thing that I've encountered in college. It allows us to be able to offset a lot of the costs that our scholarships aren't able to cover. If people like winning, invest in in, in the Flying Tee Club and NIL. It's almost a necessity now in uh, the college football world. I mean, you got to kind of invest uh, in the programs and what you put in is what you get out. John's Grill is the newest venture from John Pinnell and the Pinnell's Restaurant Group. A reach to table concept featuring food, beer, and spirits from around the great state of Texas. Our menu is designed by Chef Sean Alvarez and features two chef-inspired burgers, the fatty and the flatty, plus a brisket menu perfect for your casual night out. Fast casual service in a fun, relaxed, family-friendly environment, featuring 11 big screen TVs for you to catch the big game on. Our mixology team has created a craft cocktail and beer menu, featuring local spirits and brews from across Texas. John's Grill, home of the Players Club show each week. 2905 Westbury Street in Fort Worth or online at johnsgrill.com. Our men's basketball team had a guest at practice recently. ESPN College Hoops analyst Fran Franchilla was on campus checking out the team. His post on social media shows how much respect he has for Coach Dixon's program. I'm here in Fort Worth at TCU here at Showmeyer Arena watching the Horned Frogs practice. A lot of experience back from an NCAA run. I love this team. They're going to play extremely hard. Of course, Jamie Dixon is coaching them. Uh, you got O'Bannon, you got Peavy, you got E Man, Emmanuel Miller, you got some transfers. I love Ernest Uday, the Kansas transfer. 
brings it. Energy, great defender. I think he's going to have a big year. Uh, Jameer Nelson Jr., point guard extraordinaire, really knows how to score it, get into the lane, make plays. This is going to be a fun year in the Big 12, and it's going to be a particularly fun year here in Fort Worth. Coach Dixon said three key players sat out the practice that Fran watched, which means that this team is even deeper than most people realize. Uh, it's good. Fran's a good friend, known him for a long time, and, and he's you know talking about the Big 12 and making the best. He's done the best job year after year of promoting the Big, the Big 12 and talking about how good a conference it is. And so surely he doesn't work just for the Big 12, but he knows what's best. He knows uh, the players. He knows the personnel. He knows the coaches. Um, so it's it, it, and, he, and he's got a voice out there. Tonight is a big night on campus as Rick Ross will perform in the Showmeyer Arena as part of the preseason tip-off celebration. Doors open at 6, the show starts at 7. The TCU Athletic Department has made some great videos to promote the event, including one that features our basketball coaches. What up, Frog fans? Get the purple carpet ready to roll out because I'm pulling up in a purple Lamborghini headed to Funky Town. Get ready for the biggest boss, Ricky Rose. And then this guy's got all this room to go straight to the basket, draw somebody, and we want him going straight downhill to the basket. Coach, why are we using purple cars? Cars, cars. These are purple Lamborghinis. Rose. I checked with my daughter if it was all right. She thought it was hilarious, so I said, uh, uh, I got the most important approval, and so I was, uh, I was good with it. I was good, so. Everybody else, uh, I don't know if anybody else liked it, but my daughter did, so that's, uh, that's all that matters to me. It's going to be a fun concert. I hope to see you there. Also, remember to swing by John's Grill every Thursday night to watch the Players Club. The show is taped live every Thursday at 6 p.m. This week's guests are members of our beach volleyball team. And post-game, what are we doing? We talked about it a little bit. We're eating. What are we doing after that? Is it like ice bath time? We know you like water. We don't normally ice bath after matches. Okay. That's typically just practice. Lifting? Not after lift. It's typically just after after practice, we'll cold tub. Um, but after a match, honestly, a lot of times, like, our, our parents come in town. Oh. And yeah. so we'll go shower and then some we'll time. go out to eat. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of times we'll go to dinner together with our parents. So That's exciting. What would you say your favorite part of, like, match day is? Playing or, like... A moment. The cookie after you play. The cookie. Honestly, like, the food we get whenever it's match day is because like, it's free. Unbelievable. All you have Connie to do Rosa. is play. We get Connie Rosso. I don't. Sometimes I don't even have to play, and it I still works. get the free food. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, our team is so much fun, and like the environment, like when we're playing, is so awesome. It's we have such a good team culture that like there's yeah. It's just it's constant fun. Like, it doesn't feel like work ever. Absolutely. I love that. I like when you do stuff and it just doesn't feel like work. John's Grill is always a fun time. And hosting Frogs today has been a lot of fun, too. For everyone behind the scenes here at Frogs for Media House, I'm Pedro Vives. And I'm Sebastian Gorsny. Thanks for watching this week's show. And thank you for always supporting our tennis team. Please like and subscribe to frogstoday.com for the best coverage of TCU Athletics. Until next week, go, go Frogs! Roxo Media House.